Welcome back to Benny's Custom Works, proudly supported by Spares Box and Valvoline. Don't forget BCW5 on checkout. This week we're back on the Siggy. We're uh, tinkering away with a lot of little jobs today. We've got our new battery, which is uh, gonna go in this slot here. Off camera, I've also done sneaky things because I get bored. So we've relocated the catch can uh, in the battery tray because we're putting the smaller battery and we've got that available space now. But the most notable difference is this strut brace. So this is a Tomei uh, firewall style strut brace. So it's all triangulated and really cool. Notably though, this was not for a Sigma. So I spent pretty much a whole day making that. And because it was like 10 minutes of work, if you look at it, or that's what you think it is, uh, we didn't film it because it'd be boring. And I would have literally just been welding bits of tab to a bit of flat plate. I'm not exactly sure what it was originally from. I bought it from an importer that had had it for a long time. Uh, they they believed originally it was for an S13 when they purchased it. So it was obviously not on a car when they bought it in Japan. Um, they tested on S13, it didn't fit. I tested on a few other different cars I had lying around and it was nothing even close. Um, however, the bar lengths were really good and were gonna work pretty well with the Siggy. So I had uh, some strut top plates um, profiled lo uh, locally and they're, they're all on and welded up and, and all nice and pretty neat. I'm gonna powder coat the ends later, but I've just given a quick rattle can for now to get it on the car. Um, but yeah, we're gonna be finishing a lot of stuff up today. I've got the tail shaft. We've got our correct uh, 4.22 rear diff. We're gonna be putting that in. Uh, we're also gonna be filling up all the fluids today. So um, diff, gearbox, and we're also gonna be changing the engine oil because um, generally when you put an engine together, even a top end, you don't wanna be leaving that oil in there for long because it does flush any of the gunk out, any of the cleaning products that you've used. Also, there can be remnants of gasket material and stuff and that can clog the oil filter. So you definitely don't wanna be doing sort of 10 or 15,000 Ks in some instances on the oil that you've used uh, on a freshly assembled engine. So uh, yeah, it is pretty vital to flush all that out. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. But first we're gonna dive into some electrical. We're gonna make new battery cables. Uh, we're gonna make some other cabling in the bay which goes to our headlight relays and our main power supply to the vehicle um, and just tidying all that up because all of that cabling is pretty rough. Uh, we've also got really ugly terminals on here. Both the terminals are not the factory terminals for this car. Um, in saying that, we're obviously not gonna be putting factory terminals on it today, but we do have some much nicer ones that don't just crush the cable into the terminal. Um, those things are notorious for hot joints and, and voltage drop. So we're gonna get rid of that. We're gonna terminate some proper terminals onto the uh, cabling. And we're just gonna be bolting that directly to the terminal. So. Let's dive on in. But before we dive in, we've got this fresh new official Drag Week 2022 t-shirt available on the Team Valvoline website, www.teamvalvoline.com.au. And as a thank you to all of our viewers, we've got a discount code BCW15 on checkout on this shirt. Voltage drop city, uh, <laughs> literally just comes apart like that. That's how terrible they are. Junk terminals, man. I hate these things, hey. These are the sort of things you use when you stop at the servo and your car doesn't start again and the servo's got like 27 of these on the most janky piece of cardboard that they were attached to in the 80s from the manufacturer and they've still got like 23 of them because no one buys them. Because they suck. Like these ones are no better. Well, I lie, they're marginally better. Cause this one at least isn't pulling out. Oh no, I lie. No, nah, that's shit too. Junk, just junk. Don't use these people, they're junk. Straight in the bin. Not even gonna film it going in the bin, that's how much I don't care for it. See ya. So this is the new battery cable versus the old battery cable. Now, this is most definitely overkill, but I've got oh, probably two meters left of when we wired the Cresta. So rather than going and buying four gauge cable um, and spending more money, I'm just gonna use what we've got. Um, the old cable was probably close to eight gauge, definitely past its use by date. But yeah, if, you, if you're gonna wire your car up, you definitely don't need two gauge for a starter cable. But if you got it, most definitely use it because this stuff sucks. Look, the fabled solder and how good it is. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Nothing like a good cold solder there, people. Far out, and that cable looks like it should be for a house too. It's like proper old. And that is why you don't solder car wire. People who tell you not to crimp, 
can't crimp. I didn't do any of this. It's like trailer wiring and stuff. It's just the power supply for our headlight relays, low and high beam. Now typically this is more used for heat suppression uh, around cables and hoses, but I do also use it sometimes for um, like a, a anti-chafe covering as well. So this is what we're gonna use it for today. Um, we're gonna run it basically the whole way from the battery to the starter motor on the cabling. There was uh, originally a P-clip uh, on the cross member, but being that this is much larger cable, it doesn't actually fit between the rail and the hole in that position anymore. So we're just gonna run this on it and let it sort of just sit under its own weight. Um, I'm also going to, for that reason, going to run a little bit longer so it doesn't have uh, any strain on the cable. So it should run pretty neatly and, and this will keep it safe. We've got our battery and all of our cables sorted now in the bay, so we're going to go up and we're going to pull our wheels off, then we're going to take axles out and change our diff centre and hopefully it all fits because the diff centre is from Japan and the car is not. Now those of you with a keen eye or a knowledge of Sigmas may be a bit confused by what's going on here. So uh, a long time ago, uh, myself and a couple of mates, uh, Paulie or my brother-in-law Willie actually, we uh, machined up some brackets and stuff to make these rear disc brakes work. So the rear brakes are from a Australian delivered Pintara, so not the R31, the model after that, which I think is a U13, um, like a Bluebird-y thing. Um, but interestingly, the consumables, so both the disc and the pad are the same as S13. So, um, the, I mean, the disc's just a standard disc, but we were able to get a pretty good little performance pad for it. So um, yeah, massive, massive difference in braking and also, um, this caliper, much like the S13 caliper, has an integral handbrake. Um, while not good for handbrake turns and that sort of stuff, it's, it's a perfectly functional handbrake for a car. So yeah, you can uh, lock it up, no worries when you're parking the car. Um, it wasn't a lot of work to actually get these on the car, surprisingly. Uh, but one thing we did have to do was turn the axle down. We could have also machined the disc instead, but I'm not a fan of modifying consumables because I can now go to any part shop and buy this disc off the shelf and not have to machine it. Whereas if we'd put the disc on and then modify or modify the disc to fit the axle, it would have meant that every time we replace the discs. In saying that, it's not going to get disc changes a lot, but if I was ever to sell the car, it's easy for the next owner to just to just bolt the disc on and, and keep going rather than having to machine or drill or cut. So um, yeah, neat little conversion. Um, we didn't cover it because I'm not a massive fan of kind of diving into brake conversions purely because there's different skill sets out there and, and I kind of feel like if you have the skill set to do it, you have the skill set to sort of design it and set it up. Um, but that being said, we're gonna now pull the brakes off so that we can take the axles out and change our diff center over.
we're waiting for our uh, diff nuts to get clean in the ultrasonic cleaner, we're just going to put the tail shaft in. So we'll sit that in and, and tighten up on the flange. Uh, the tail shaft is actually a hybrid of a GE Sigma 4 speed, which I believe is also the same length as a 5 speed for argument's sake. Uh, but we've also got a uh, GK Sigma yoke on the front end of it. Uh, interestingly, when I bought the unis, they're also the same listing as a lot of uh, 70s Holdens. So by the time this car was built, there's obviously a lot of Australian content starting to creep into it. Um, but yeah, that's really handy because you can buy them from anywhere. So super convenient. And the shaft's also got now brand new unis in it. So I'm gonna whack that in and keep on going. In my wisdom, I've misplaced the original choke cable, which was way too short. So we've got an aftermarket three meter long one, which is mad if your car is in the boot, but we need to make a bracket to mount it to the car. So we'll get our fixture table back out. It's done some work on oh, fixture table. So we ran into a little bit of a complication with the Webers. So the, the little gland bolt that uh, actually holds the choke cable to the choke lever, the hole in it was only 1.5 millimeters. So the actual choke cable that I've got is not the old style cable where it's a, a single wire. So this particular one's almost like a, a push bike cable where it's a twisted braid wire. Um, so we did have to drill out that little bolt uh, to two millimeters and, and that's given us enough clearance to get the cable through. So we've now got our cable run. The last thing to do is just cut the actual cable to length. 
and then I'm just gonna put a piece of glue filled heat shrink on the very end of it to stop it fraying in the same way I've done the accelerator cable. Chopping time. Check on. The last job of the day is to fit this taco. Um, I've actually tried to fit two different factory taco dashes to this car and there seems to be a wiring difference between uh, the 77, 78 car and the 78 and a half, 79 car. Uh, so with that in mind, I've decided to bite the bullet and just buy something aftermarket. Uh, this thing's pretty neat and I think it still goes with the style of the car as well. So uh, we're gonna throw that in now and hopefully be pretty simple because there should actually be all of the wiring we already need at the dash cluster. So I've got the trusty factory service manual with the wiring diagram and hopefully we can find it because it does show a taco circuit specifically listed for all cars. So fingers crossed. So I've just got to jump off of that. You know what I love about pulling dash clusters out? It's nothing. This one is one of the easier ones to remove though, to be fair. dead cold relax internet I know your people are gonna come after me Well, that pretty much brings us to the end of another Siggy episode for the day. Uh, as we start to get to the end of any project, it's a lot of little fiddly jobs ticking stuff off, and today's been no exception. Um, it's pretty much finished now with the exception of the Carby tune. Uh, Isaac's gonna be helping us probably a little bit later in the year with that, so I've been fiddling around with it in the background to the point now where, where it will at least run and drive, so um, it's definitely not the most efficient way of getting it to work, but it at least runs and drives, so now I can take it around locally, cruise around, whatever. So that takes the pressure off a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much where we're gonna leave it. It's gonna pop up here and there, but we're gonna be diving back into some projects that you probably haven't seen for a while coming forward. Uh, the Falcon's gonna make a return, Gian's is gonna make a return, and we're probably gonna drag some other cars out that may not even have been seen on camera before. So uh, yeah, plenty up and coming for the rest of the year for BCW. We've also got Drag Week obviously coming up too, so we're uh, well and truly gotten through a lot of the uh, Australia side of it. The cars are on the water right now. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when you guys are going to be seeing the episode in the real time, but by the end of August, all of us, are, all of the cars are going to be there and we're going to be in America early September. Um, keep an eye on our socials in real time for updates. We're probably going to try and do at least one, maybe two meets in the States before Drag Week, uh, or maybe one before and one after. Uh, Ali's coming over. Woody's not coming, unfortunately. He's got prior commitments. Um, but yeah, we're gonna have a bit of a different crew this year. So uh, keep, keep watching and updated for that. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you next time.